What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another math lesson. Today, we are playing the word problem game. We're trying to figure out, hey, is my word problem multiplication or is it division? So let's take a look at what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to figure out whether a word problem is multiplication or division by labeling my bar models. We're gonna be using labeling in our bar models to really help us understand when we're supposed to multiply and when we're supposed to divide, which leads us to what do you need to know before you can start? So here's our list of things you need to know. Number one, you need to understand what multiplication is, right? Multiplication is repeated addition. It's equal groups and you're bringing them together to find the total. Number two, you need to understand what division is, right? There are two different types of division word problems. One is when you take the total and you are splitting it into equal groups and you're trying to figure out how many uh, of whatever that number is do you have in each group. The second type of division word problem is when you have the total and you are putting the same amount into each group and you are trying to figure out, hey, how many groups of that can I make? And then our last one, understand what a bar model is, right? We're gonna be using our part whole model, that's what we call it. Some people might call it a bar model, some people might be calling it a tape diagram, some people might call it a strip diagram, right? But it's just a visual way to show what is happening in any word problem. If you have all three hearts and you are ready to play the game, let's find out what the rules of the game are. And there's only one rule for this game, right? The number one rule for the word problem game, each does not mean to multiply and it does not mean to divide. Maybe you're a teacher and you've been telling your kids that, right? And you say, when you see that word each in a certain part of the word problem, it means multiply. Or if you see it in the end of the word problem, it means to divide. Please stop saying that, right? Each does not mean that. If you're a student and your teacher has been telling you that, you should always listen to your teacher except for that right? Because it actually may help you get the right answer, but it's not helping you understand how to do it properly, right? So each, let me say it again, because it's the number one rule, does not mean to multiply, and it does not mean to divide. If you try to do that, you're going to cause an error. We're going to have to reset the game and play again. So if each doesn't mean those things, right, what does each mean? Because you see it a lot of times in these multiplication and division word problems. Each simply tells you that you are playing this game with equal groups, right? Each tells you that you have, and I know I capitalized that E, but you know, it's not a literacy lesson, right? Each tells you that you have equal groups. So let's say you had, you know, three bags of apples and there were five apples in each of them, right? So the parts are going to be five. They're going to be equal and now you know, hey, I may be able to multiply or I may be able to divide to help me solve this answer. Each really means one, right? In one of those groups, it's five. So there's another thing that each can help you do, right? And so here I have a multi-flow map, a thinking map. If you don't know what thinking maps are, check them out. They are awesome to use in the classroom. And basically, this is a cause and effect, right? So this is an event, right? You found the word each. And this is what happens because of that, right? These are the effects on this side. So when you see the word each or any words like it, right? It could be every, it could be per, it could even be a. It could be telling you that a bag had three apples in it, okay? Again, it tells you that you have equal groups, right? Which you know it's going to help you know what model to draw. But it's also going to help you identify the parts of that model, right? When you're making your part whole model and you're doing these equal groups, you want to start with the parts many times because that's going to really help you figure out whether or not you're multiplying or dividing at the end of it. Are you looking for the total and you're going to multiply or do you already have the total and you're splitting it up, which would be division. So having the word each is kind of like having, you know, a weapon in a game, right? When I played Legends of Zelda, you always wanted to get that the good sword, right, and carry it with you. So now if you can find that word each, it's kind of like you have your sword and you are ready to play this word problem game and start solving problems. So here is example number one. Zelda Ocarina of Time had eight temples in it. It really didn't, but for the sake of this problem, we're going to use it. 
you needed to use four keys in each temple. How many keys did you need to use? So I see this as a word problem. I'm going to use my sides check word problem strategy. Some people think this is too long or too procedural. I disagree with you. However, as long as you're doing a word problem strategy that where you write a statement first, right, where you begin with the end in mind, I think you're okay. So my question said, how many keys did you need to use? So my statement's gonna say, you need to use blank keys. And I'm gonna put a question mark right here on this blank because somewhere on my model, I should have a question mark keys, right? We use a question mark on our bar models to show us what we're trying to solve for. So what is important about this statement that you need to identify anything about? And that's keys. If my answer is about keys, I should circle or identify things that are going to help me find out information about keys. So let's go back into the word problem. Zelda Ocarina of Time had eight temples in it. You need to use four keys, oh, there we go, in each temple, so now the temples are important, how many keys did you use? Let's stop. I saw that word each, I know that I have equal groups, and because it said you needed four keys in each temple, right, the four keys are part of this sentence that the word each is in, I know that the four keys are going to be my part. So let's draw our part whole model. Okay, I just put a blank one right there. And I'm gonna do this in blue so you can just kind of see the difference right here. I've already identified, it's time to develop my model. I know it was equal groups because I saw that word each, right? And I know my four keys are my parts because it said there are four keys in each temple. The word each can help you find your part. So let's go ahead and put four here and then label the keys outside. So anything inside my part whole model is now keys. That's what I just labeled this out here. And if I add keys together, if my parts are keys, then my total also has to be keys. Well, did I circle anything else about keys in my word problem? And the answer is no, I didn't. I didn't circle anything else about keys, but I know my question is asking me for how many keys did I use? So I know now my question mark has to be my total because that's my only other information about keys that I had. So if I know four keys are my parts and I know that I had equal groups, I'm looking for my total keys, that means my groups have to be the temple, which makes sense because there are four keys in each temple. So I had eight temples. Let's go ahead and split my part whole model up into four, I'm oh, sorry, eight equal groups. So I split into half, there we go. And I know that there are four keys in each of these groups, okay, because my four is my parts. And then I know that each of these is a temple because four keys in each temple. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight temples. There we go. And now I can figure out, hey, I know all of my parts. I know all of my groups and I'm looking for the total. I need to bring my parts together. So I could do repeated addition, four plus 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 four. Plus four. But instead of that, I'm going to use my multiplication. So I have eight groups of four, and that equals my question mark, which is 32, right? So I know these numbers were smaller, but you could replace eight with 1,000 if you wanted to. You could replace four with 32. The numbers don't matter. Matter of fact, if you think this is too easy, and you're like, hey, I already knew this out showing my work, I suggest you check out our next video, which is solving these word problems, well, really not solving them, which is figuring out what to do with word problems when there are no numbers by using your bar models, okay? So go ahead and check that video out if you need that next level of question. But I would say that we solve that, so at the end of every level, right, you get a treasure box, so here we go, here's our treasure box full of coins, and let's check out level two. All right, here is our level two, our example two problem. It says Xander mows lawns in his neighborhood and makes $9 every week. He's saving for a new Mario Kart game. The new game will cost $72. How many weeks will he have to work? So again, I have my sides check over here. And again, I'm going to begin with the end in mind. I'm going to write my statement. My question says, how many weeks will he have to work? So my statement's gonna say, he will have to work blank weeks. And now I'm gonna ask myself, what is important about my statement that I can identify anything about? So this is anything about weeks or maybe anything that he's working for, right? So Xander mows lawns in his neighborhood and makes $9 every week. So I know that this is $9 because it's about what he's making in a week 
each or every, right? It has the same meaning, week. He's saying for a new Mario Kart game, the game will cost $72. Again, now my money is important because I already circled something about money. How many weeks will he have to work? So I saw this word every, it's the same thing as each, which told me I have equal groups and that my $9 is going to be my parts. So I draw my equal group model. I know that $9 is my part. So I'm going to put nine. I'm going to write the word dollars out here. And again, I start with my parts because if my parts are $9, then my total has to be dollars, right? Whatever your parts are, your total has to be the same thing. That's why I make sure I label so I can double check that. Now, did I circle anything else about money? Oh yeah, I did. I said the new game will cost $72. That means 72 is going to be your total. So when you add up all of your parts of nine, you're gonna get a total of 72. So I know my parts were dollars. I know my 72 is my dollars is my total, and I'm looking for how many weeks I have to work. That means I don't have my groups. So the way I show this one is, I put nine right here, and I know nine is gonna be equal at the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and put $9 there. One week was $9, dot, 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 how many weeks of nine would you have to make to equal 72? So I put this little dot, dot, dot right here. That means you could draw out nine, keep drawing out nine equal groups until you get 72. But I know I have equal groups. I know that I have my total. So I'm going to be dividing 72 into nine in each. And that's going to tell you how many weeks you had to work. And so for this one, obviously the answer would be eight, although that's not the point of this. The point of this is just to figure out, am I multiplying or dividing? So they would have to work eight weeks. So like I said, you could draw out eight of these groups right off the bat and keep skip counting until you get 72. But what if the eight weeks no was 32 weeks, right? You don't want to have to draw out 32 weeks. That's why I put this dot, dot, dot. I'm just showing I have equal groups. And then I show that I'm looking for how many groups of nine would I need to make 72. Again, if you need an extra challenge, check out our next video, which is just solving these word problems that don't have numbers in them. Because I know a lot of times we just look at the numbers and try to figure out what to do. We're going to be using the same strategy, labeling our bar models, to help us do that. At some point, every game has to end. So this is game over for this word problem game. We appreciate you checking us out. Check out all our other math resources, songs, timers in lessons on our YouTube page. We'd love to have you subscribe. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.